And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Tiny Epic Mechs. One year ago to the day, I was at Origins, and uh, someone came up to me, and they said, Hey, I got something cool to show you. And they opened their hand, and they showed me meeples that went inside mechs. That is awesome. It really is awesome. And I have to say, of all the Tiny Epic games, this is the one that I look forward to the most. Mostly because I saw meeples going inside mechs. And you could put items on them. And they introduced the item meeples where the meeples could hold weapons. This, I know that they did in Tiny Epic Zombies and Tiny Epic Quest. And while I haven't played Tiny Epic Zombies, I really like Tiny Epic Quest. And I like the items you can get. And so I was pretty pumped about that. This is also a programming style game. And it's mech versus mech combat. Let's do it. You're going to build a board made up of different cards that are going to be energy or credits on those cards. Each player is going to have a base. At the beginning of the game, players are going to get a few things. You're going to get a card that's going to show your pilot. That pilot at some point can get on some battle armor. Look at that. Kitty, she looks pretty fierce there, but look at that. What? Tsunami already looks pretty bad. What? Getting better. So each of these people is going to come with a special ability that you will have and a spot to put weapons. You can have two basic weapons once you're in your armor, you can also have two advanced weapons. Players are going to pick one of the four basic weapons to start the game with, so grenade launcher, pulse pistol, riot shield, or energy sword. You'll pick those simultaneously. You will find the proper thing and equip your little dude with it. You're also going to be putting a mine in your starting base area. Players are also going to have a card in front of them, which is going to keep track of your how much energy credits you have and how much energy you have. It also tells you a little bit about how to play the game. And on the back is if you're playing against a solo robot. There's going to be scoring rounds, two, four, and six, but each round of the game is going to be played the same. Players are going to look through some programming cards, and they're going to be putting these cards in front of them. So you, let's say I want to deploy a turret and go this direction, move this direction. I'll do this and put one of the cards I'm not using on top of it. So many of the cards, you're just going to pick what direction you want to move in, although there is a jump where it lets you move diagonally, and this lets you skip a space and jump into that space. Each uh, card also also has an ability on it so the jumps have no action you jump that's pretty much all you do this lets you deploy a turret where you'll pay money to drop a turret out on the board this lets you purchase more weapons you can purchase the basic weapons or you can purchase from some face up cards next to the board some really cool advanced weapons that you can only use in a power suit but you can buy them even before you get the power suit and each of these weapons has a corresponding cool thing that you'll be able to stick onto the mech there's also cards that say collect. When you collect any spot that you're on and or have mines or turrets on those spots, you will collect energy and credits for those spots. And there's a lot of cards that do that. There's also power up where you can heal or you can pay money. And then forget this guy here. Now we're going to... This will be, of course, done in super slow motion with all kinds of fire coming from the sky. Put this on there. And now I can put this sword. Look at that sword I have. But you didn't know that earlier I bought a couple advanced weapons that no one noticed because of this. And so I'll put these on here. And yeah! Now you have a power armor, which is considerably more here. When this blows up, you just kind of blow out of your suit to some degree. But now I'm, I'm cooking here and have some cool things that I can go around and fight with. And even cooler than that, if you have your power armor on and you enter the spot with a mighty mech, then forget that pathetic suit of armor. Instead, you get some points immediately, and you're going to move into this mighty mech that's been sitting there. Of course, everyone's going to be coming after you now. But I have this, and you can put your weapons on that. Of course, this can't take basic weapons. It can only take an advanced weapons on it. But who cares, because the advanced weapons are so cool. So I'm going to put these advanced weapons on it, and then I'm going to decide whether I want to use the Troy 3000 or the Sparta 3000, giving me some weapons here. And But the Mighty Mech can't heal. So once you get blown up, then that's going to be gone. You get blown out of your suit, and you have to start over from scratch. 
Now, as the game goes by, you're going to be deploying mines and you're going to be deploying turrets on the board. That's in case someone else moves into a mine, you'll turn it over and it will deal that much damage to them and then it's gone. A turret will deal damage to them, but it will stay there. It's also important that you have those out because during scoring phases, you're going to get points for areas that you control. Mines will give you points. Uh, turrets will give you double points and where you are, you control and if you control the mighty mech, you'll get three and that will help happen every scoring phase. Another way to score though is if you move into a spot with someone else then it's time for a fight whenever you have a fight each player will take turns basically tapping one of their weapons doing that much damage to the other person when you do damage to the other person you will also get points equal to the damage however when you damage someone if you're, you're going to be able to use each weapon once. If the other person used a melee weapon, for example, and then I use an area weapon, um, or I'm sorry, if they use an area weapon and then I use a melee weapon, then I will use the second line. So normally I would do one a damage with a sword, but then I will do two if they just used an area attack, and they're also going to lose one credit and one energy. So the weapons get better if you can use them after your opponent has done the, the correct weapon. It's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors thing. So, for example, the gauze rifle does two damage, and I get a credit or an energy, but if I use it at the right time, I'll do, do three, and I'll get two. Uh, the particle phaser, I'll steal money or steal the, and do two damage here. This does three damage, but then three damage, and I can also hit other enemies with this rail gun. And the warhammer, oh, look at that. I hit for a damage and then score an extra point. Three damage and score an extra point. Pretty awesome. So players will go back and forth, and again, if you if you destroy your enemy, they're going to be going back to their base, they're going to be coming out again. If you are ever destroyed, you go into what is called ad hoc mode, and your cards that are put down, because each player is going to be revealing their programming cards one at a time around the table, well, your programming has just been messed up, so at that, that point, you pick up your whole hand, and you can play the cards in any direction you want, giving you a lot more control at the you know loss of being blown up. After six rounds, whoever has the most points is going to win the game. Hey, there's an FAQ inside the box. I like that. Not bad. I like the components for this game. I mean, don't get me wrong. One of the main things about this game is simply all the weapons. This is not the first time we see these item meeples. These item meeples have been included before in different uh, games that... The game One Games has done, but then being able to take this and drop your guy in the suit is really fun. It just gives you this feeling of, I don't know, this power-up feeling. And so here we go. The suit's on now. Also, I have this really cool hammer weapon and a machine gun. Let's do this. And they look cool. This is just fun. It's, it's like kind of cute and cool at the same time. The card quality for everything is very well done. It's really easy to see what stuff does. I also like the different characters. They have a nice plethora of very, very different characters, and it looks neat when they're all in their upgraded uh, Warhammer suit side. There's also, you know, cards that explain everything, the solo robots and how they work. You keep track of all the different things. The board's going to be different. The weapons are really cool. I mean... I mean, look at these four weapons I have over here next to the board. We got a cross bolt, shock knuckles, Gatling gun, and a lightning coil. And again, it's very easy to figure out what everything does. There's lots of little wooden pieces here, mostly turrets and mines. And honestly, just a very nicely put together production. Okay, so there's a lot of things that I like about this game. The, mo the biggest one is upgrading. It's fun to start with a weapon. Uh, that hopefully no one else has. I always try to pick one I think no one else will pick. And if you're not sure, pick the shield. No one picks the shield to start with. Um, but there's these up, I mean, awesome upgrade weapons. What's neat about the advanced weapons is no one else has them. So if I have a crossbow, no one else will have it. That's pretty cool. I also like some things that this game does that are pretty neat. One of those is the ad hoc mode. When your programming cards go out, you can, I mean, if, I mean, if you're killed, you don't have to worry about your programming then just running into the wall or something. You're never really out of this game. Like a video game, you just respawn and come back. So that's cool. It's also fun, like I said, you know, you feel that slow anime moment when you upgrade into your Mac and area control. Lots of cool stuff. But, all right, some problems. First of all, combat. The combat in this game is just boring. I was really disappointed by it. Combat's deterministic. I, 
I don't know that I need dice in a game, but I need some excitement. And if someone runs into someone else, you can almost you can play out the whole combat before it starts. Uh, they you sit there and it's like, hmm, what weapon should I use? I know I'll use the one that my opponent can't follow up on. Now, there might be some small deviations in that pattern where if I play this one, of course you'll use this one, then I'll hit you with this one. But it's just, uh, the weapons are just not that exciting. They, they're exciting looking. They sound interesting. But when it comes to the end of the day, the combat is the most boring part of this game, and it's called Tiny Epic Mechs. It should be the most exciting part of the game. Not to mention combat is critical because you get a ton of points from combat. Well, also, controlling spots with turrets is also get you a lot of points. But combat's pretty critical in this game, and yet you kind of stumble into it. I can't really force combat to happen unless you've killed my mech, then I can go to where you're at. Otherwise, we're walking around, and I'm going to go to this spot hoping you go there. And so what the game looks like, it looks like a bunch of drunken mechs walking around, and when they hit each other, then there's a slow-motion, boring brawl. And again... The rest of the game I like. I like that you move around and you pick up, you know, you, you, you're, you're slowly increasing and getting weapons and you're dropping mines down to blow people up and why you wouldn't drop your four mines down before your threes is beyond me. But anyway, you know, you, you, you go around, you drop mines and you drop turrets, you try to control spots, but at the end of the day, it has to be about that combat. You get a point for every damage you do to somebody. But... I'm about to. I'm trying to get you, and you move away, and the other guy runs into you, and you both have a big fight. You both get points, and I don't. And that big mighty mech in the middle of the table looks awesome, but it's just not that cool. I mean, granted, I don't want it to be overpowered, and it's not. So I'm glad that it's not overpowered. But at the same time, it also doesn't feel as mighty once you get into it. It takes a lot of work to get into it. You get a few extra points. It would have been a lot easier to go over and smack around Beverly's mech for a while before that happened. So, again, a lot of cool concepts in the game. If you don't like programming and figuring out where things go and possibly going in the wrong direction, you're not going to like this anyway. But if you do like programming, and I do, I think this game falls apart in the excitement mode. It, uh, uh, Tiny Epic mechs, and you look at the box and you see people shooting at each other, none of that ever comes through in this game. The, the battles are just too dry and boring. I'm also not convinced the game is balanced with three players. Um, but with four, it kind of evens out, and you're all moving around. But again, it, it feels so lucky. It just feels like, oh, I went this way. I knew you weren't going there. And I get the whole trying to outthink each other, but there's no real focus here. Your focus is drop turrets on the spots that are worth more points. There's some spots that are three points. Sure, I'm going to drop a turn on those, so I'm going to go to that make you are. But other than that, I'm just wildly guessing what you're going to do next. And half time, I might even have to wildly guess because then you might get blown up and then... It's like Vader, or, or I'm sorry, Kenobi, that you destroy me, the more powerful I become. Then that person can run around, which sounds great, except you got to slowly build up and jump back in your suit, get your weapons. Ah, this is easily the biggest disappointment of this line for me because I was super pumped about it. Uh, the Tiny Epic series has been some I've really liked, some I haven't liked as much, like Tiny Epic Quest, the last one I played, I really enjoyed that one. Tiny Epic Max for me, though, feels like it could be so much greater and I think maybe it would be if the combat was more interesting and I don't know I, 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 I couldn't even tell you how to fix it I don't know I don't know I'm not saying it has to be dice it has to be but it has to be something where it's like all right now we're going into battle let's do this and more like oh you ran into me all right let's get this over with tap 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 and you did this damage okay let's keep moving that's just not exciting and unfortunately because the whole game kind of is focused around that point and, 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 and if you say, no, that's not the game. The game's not really about combat. Then why is it about mechs? Make it an area control game. So, eh, tiny epic mechs. It's almost there. I, I can feel the greatness in the game. I can feel that it's, there's, I want to play it. I, I want to like this game more than I wanted to like any of their other games that they made. <sighs> but this one just didn't cut it for me. Dice Tower Judgment, just unsatisfying at the end of the day.